Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Vigenhill. And I'm Amanda Kandari. Here's your news now. This weekend, Hurricane Sandy came and devastated the East Coast. Let's take a look at our local community and see how Sandy affected it. On Sunday, Hurricane Sandy started her visit to the East Coast. Sandy was predicted to be three times larger than Hurricane Irene was a year ago. At first, students at Cabrini College took to the weather of Hurricane Sandy and enjoyed it. However, later that same night, Hurricane Sandy started to show her true power. The storm finally ended on Tuesday, and the local community took some damage. Although the local community was hit hard, it falls short in comparison to the devastation that Hurricane Sandy delivered to the East Coast. When you see neighbors helping neighbors, then you're reminded about what America's all about. You know, we go through tough times, but we bounce back. And the reason we bounce back is uh, because uh, we look out for one another. It's Philly weekend. This Thursday in Philly at Kaplan Studio Theater, a production of Stage Door will be held. The student production is about a love story focused on young actress living in Manhattan in the 1930s. Admission is $10 with student ID. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. This Sunday, November 4th in Philly on Walnut Street, the Alpha Pi Omega Service Fraternity at Penn is hosting a zombie 5K run. The run helps to raise awareness for bone marrow disease. Those participating can register either, either as a human or a zombie. The humans will wear a flag to represent their lives, while the zombies will try and steal them. Prizes will be awarded and all proceeds will benefit, benefit the Live Beyond Foundation. Registration is $25. That also includes a t-shirt and refreshments. Also in Philly, on Chestnut Street at the Ibrahim Theater, a 1967 film will be shown starring John Lennon about a darkly comedic look at World War II. The movie is not like your everyday movie. The actors address the viewer and there is interrupted action and some strange soundtrack choices. Admission is $7 with student ID. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. In Cabrini Sports, field hockey lost their final regular season game, 4-0 at the hands of Alverna University. Hopefully they'll be able to get their swagger back in time for the CSAC tournament. Women's soccer beat Cedar Crest College 4-1 on Saturday, which was senior day. Those were recorded by Molly Cheneau, Dana Peterson, Gabby Meck, and Nicole Hallinan. Cheneau spent the past four seasons as a student assistant coach and suited up and scored on Saturday in a true feel-good story. Cross-country CSAC tournament took place Saturday with the men placing 7th and the women placing 11th. All other CSAC tournaments for fall sports have been postponed to Thursday due to Hurricane Sandy. In Philly sports, the Eagles lost 30-17 to the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. The loss is Andy Reid's first loss after a bye week since he took the job in 1999. While it is said by Coach Reed that Michael Vick will start Monday night's game against New Orleans, it is widely believed and speculated that rookie Nick Foles will take the reins instead. Who do you want to see start under center? Tweet us your thoughts at Location PR. In baseball, the San Francisco Giants defied the odds and swept the Detroit Tigers to win their second World Series in three years. Pablo Sandoval has been named the series MVP. That was your sports update. Now back to Amanda for your news from across the nation. Hurricane Sandy definitely left its mark along the East Coast. In New Jersey, specifically Atlantic City and the Jersey Shore boardwalks were destroyed, houses were flooded, and small fires were started. In New York, streets turned into rivers, cars floated down streets, and power outages raced through the city. At least 18 people were killed due to the hurricane, 10 of them connected to New York City alone. According to the New York Times, it could be days, maybe even weeks, before life could return to normal for those living in New Jersey and New York. With all the commotion due to Hurricane Sandy, the election has been put on the back burner. However, the election is quickly approaching and will take place on November 6th. In Texas, a 90-year-old woman takes to the polls for the very first time. Cecilia Romero has lived all over the world and speaks four languages. 
hence the fact that she has never been to the polls before in person. She has always changed locations due to her late husband's work in international public relations. Omera, who was born in Nicaragua, got her citizenship in 1969, but has always had to send in an absentee ballot. She, she knew exactly who she was voting for, and according to Fox News, this was quite an emotional time for her, but also very exciting. Location went around several campuses, including Villanova and Temple, to find out who students are voting for and why. Let's hear what students had to say. I'm going to vote for... I'm voting for... Obama. I'm going to be voting for Obama. Mitt Romney. For Barack Obama. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Mitt Romney. Candidate Gary Johnson. Barack Obama. I think that if Romney was elected, America's reputation, especially in the eyes of European countries and the rest of the world, would be sullied and terrible. And they would... We would be an embarrassment to like the rest of the world, I think. A lot of his platforms are really like like old and outdated and I can't like I think America just needs to progress. Like his Romney's stance on gay marriage and abortion I just think is really uh, terrible. Yeah. I don't know. I'm gay so I like support gay rights and gay marriage and everything, so I'm for Obama. I think that Romney would probably do better with adding jobs because he seems to have been able to add jobs as a governor. I'm from Massachusetts, and when he was governor, he did a lot of good things for the education system in the state and for the tax reforms in the state and also the, um, his social platforms. This is huge, you know, especially for our college kids, for people on the campus coming out and needing jobs. There's not enough out there. I think the debate <laughs> kind of is pushing more toward that. I think um, Barack Obama will do a better job at um, giving, getting students better jobs. In my opinion, I feel as though that he is more um, he is more concerned about saying us getting our education, and I do believe that he is more concerned about us making sure that we can afford our education. So I think that with that being said, he does care about us getting jobs afterwards, so that way um, the cycle can continue. I think by voting, you're endorsing the fact that the government holds so much power over people who actually should be controlling the government because it's our country. Um, they want us to vote. I'm not voting. Corrupt. I don't care because they're going to do whatever the hell they want to anyway. My voice doesn't matter. The Electoral College votes matter. So that's why I'm not voting. I know a lot of um, students who are about 20 or 21 and they're still not registered. And they just kind of don't care. They say, I don't... Um, I'm not informed about it, so I'm not going to make the decision, but I think they should make the choice to be informed. Documented immigrants are getting a second chance at joining the military. Recruiters are looking for immigrants with special language and medical skills. The program opened in 2009, but was quickly eliminated in 2010. MAVNI, or more formally known as Military Sessions Vital to the National Interest, is a small program that recruits a little over 1,000 immigrants. To qualify, you must be a resident in the United States for two years, be a high school graduate, and you must pass the entrance test. According to the New York Times, recruiting officers were pleased to find that the Pentagon opened up the progr program again, but were upset that it took them this long to reopen. The first round of recruiting filled up quickly and thousands were turned away. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Christine with your weekly entertainment update. The winner for the Location Halloween Costume Contest goes to Aubrey Stokes for her costume of the Mad Hatter. Hurricane Sandy came and went, and movie premieres and filming came to a halt on parts of the East Coast. At least nine TV shows were affected by the shutdown, including Gossip Girl, 666 Park Avenue, and the following. Even though Sandy was the cause for Broadway to go dark Tuesday night, two shows in New York still went on. Sandy left the New York entertainment industry fighting to go on with the show, even though it meant performing for empty studios. That's how David Letterman and Jimmy Fallon taped their late night shows Monday night, leading to some remarkably quiet monologues. You can catch up on The Late Show on CBS.com. Lindsay Lohan has put her nose in the middle of politics, despite not being registered to vote at this time, so it's not a huge surprise that she feels the need to give her input on Hurricane Sandy. As hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers were being evacuated from their homes Sunday night, Lohan tweeted out to her 4.5 million followers a plea for people to cut out the negativity regarding the life-threatening thousand-mile-wide storm. Why is everyone in such a panic about Hurricane I'm Calling It Sally? Stop projecting negativity. Think positive and pray for peace, she tweeted. Tell us about what you think about Lohan's reaction at Location PR. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. For a 16-year-old living in India, her dream of becoming a doctor takes a turn for the worse. The young girl was dragged into a darkened stone shelter where eight men assaulted and raped her. 
According to the New York Times, the men threatened that they would kill her if she told anyone. The men took videos of the assault, which were later passed around and were shown to the girl's father, who soon after seeing it committed suicide. Police have arrested eight men who have all confessed to the attack. In Baghdad, Iraqi authorities stopped an Iranian cargo plane on its way to Syria for inspection. According to Fox News, the authorities wanted to make sure the plane was not carrying weapons. Reportedly, such inspections have eased the United States concerns that Iraq had become a route for military weapons. Experts say the plane was only carrying medical supplies and food and was later released. However, that is not stopping officials from doing regular checks on suspected planes carrying weapons, even though Iraqi officials have stated they will not allow their country to do such a thing. In Greece, a journalist was arrested after publishing a list of names who hold accounts with the HSBC Bank in Switzerland. Many of the roughly 2,000 Greeks listed are suspected of using these accounts as tax evasion. The list was uncovered by a bank employee, and the Greek government has now been accused of trying to cover up the situation. According to BBC News, the names on the list include many politicians and well-known businessmen. Still, the journalist was charged with a breach of privacy. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Amanda Kandari. And I'm Bethany Bigenhoe. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.